Hi everyone, welcome back to Useful Genetics. This is lecture 7F, a quite a short lecture. We're going to introduce one more point about events in meiosis. Specifically, we're going to think about how the cell accomplishes the goal of making random new combinations of chromosomes in the daughter cells that it produces. And it does this because the orientation of the kinetochores when the chromosomes attach to the spindle fibers is random, so we can't predict which chromosomes are going to be paired, pulled to which side, the dad chromosomes or the mom chromosomes. So we, already, we talked about in the previous lecture that meiosis solves the first problem, ensuring that each haploid cell gets a complete set of chromosomes by pairing the homologs so that then they can be pulled apart when the cell divides in the same way that the sister chromatids are pulled apart in mitosis. The second problem is how does the cell randomly mix the diploid cells, two sets of chromosomes, the sets that that diploid cell inherited from its two parents? And the answer is it doesn't have to do anything special because the chromosomes are randomized spontaneously by their movement in the cell before the spindle fibers attach to them. Here's a reminder of um, what happens to a single cell in meiosis. The um, sister chromatids are paired to each other, and the homologous sister chromatids from dad and from mom have been brought together to form a pair, which is going to be pulled apart by the spindle fibers, which are attached to structures called kinetochores on, at the centromeres of the chromosomes. When all the chrom pairs of homologs are attached, then the checkpoint is successfully passed and the signal is given that it's okay to go ahead and divide the cell. Here's another drawing showing first one pair of chromosomes and then two more. So this would be a cell with three types of chromosomes or it could be we're only looking at three of our chromosomes. And you can see that the short and the long dad chromosomes have lined up on one side with the medium-sized mom chromosome. But it could have been different. The dad chromosomes could have lined up on the other side, so that in this case, all the dad chromosomes went to one side, all the mom chromosomes went to the other. Now, I've made a little demonstration to help you visualize the cause of this. Basically, it's that the cell isn't a flat sheet of paper or a flat computer screen. The cell is a three-dimensional space, and the chromosomes are moving through three dimensions. To illustrate what I mean by random orientation of the kinetic course, I've made some pipe cleaner chromosomes, um, two different chromosomes here, each of which is made up of two sister chromatids from a yellow parent and two sister chromatids from a green parent. And the chromosomes have kinetochores in red. And depending on the exact orientation, when the spindle fiber meets the kinetochore, the green homologs will wind up being pulled to one pole and the yellow homologs to the other pole. If the orientation had been slightly different, the yellow homologs would have been pulled to one pole and the green to the other pole and each chromosome is moving independently. So the orientation of any one chromosome doesn't influence the orientation of the other chromosome. So I hope that demonstration helped you see why there are multiple correct arrangements when there are more than one chromosome. The last thing I want you to think about is, well, how many correct or possible arrangements are there? Consider the numbers. If there's one pair of chromosomes, you might say, well, it doesn't matter. And in males, it doesn't matter. All of the chromosomes will wind up in the gamete. But if there's, if they were thinking about a female cell, then there are two outcomes. The mom chromosome could wind up in the oocyte, in the ovum, and the dad chromosome in the polar bodies, or vice versa. So if there's one chromosome, there's two possibilities. If there's two chromosomes, there's four possibilities. If there are three chromosomes, there's eight possibilities. Again, considering situations where it matters whether the 
chromosome we're thinking about is on the left or the right, on the polar body side or the ovum side of the cell. And you can see a pattern. The numbers are actually going up as 2 to the n. So for 23 chromosomes, 2 to the 23 is actually a very large number. So what we've done is we've considered the chromosomes as moving in the three-dimensional space that is the cell. And this movement explains how it is that they come to be randomly positioned with respect to the directions that they're being pulled by the spindle fibers, and thus that the gametes that are produced contain random combinations of the chromosomes that the parent cell inherited in, its, in the gametes that formed it. Coming up next, we're going to do a series of problems where instead of focusing on the physical movements that happen in meiosis, we're going to follow the genotypes of alleles on the chromosomes. I hope to see you there.